It is your classic metal show right here on the classicmetalshow.com. That's Guns N' Roses from their last studio release, Chinese Democracy, and that is better, Chris. And, uh, well, feeling pretty much better is uh, as our next guest is uh, Frank Ferrar. Is that how you say your last name, Frank? I've always been confused. It, it's Ferrer, like four air. Okay. <laughs> hey, I, Chris, how are you? This is Frank. <laughs> hey, Frank, how are you, man? Good. Nice to meet you. Hey, Neely. How you doing? Good, good. Well, we've been looking forward all week to having you here on the Classic Metal Show there, Frank. And, uh, cool. Thank you. Y- you know, we've we've had uh, various members of Guns N' Roses on the uh, show, which are many, you know, right. and you're one of many, you know. <laughs> yeah. But currently, yeah. you are the current guy behind the kit, and yes, uh, it's very uh, cool to have you here on the Classic Metal Show. Well, thank you for having me, gentlemen. You bet. Well, we're not. We're far from gentlemen, especially if you speak to Chris. He's a foul mouth bastard. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, I can't do much cussing uh, today because uh, um, on the weekends I have my kids when I'm home, so I have my uh, son and my daughter here, so I can't go oh. huge. <laughs> All good, man. Well, Frank, uh, certainly a busy time for you. Uh, Guns N' Roses uh, getting ready to fire up once again. I know they announced this week that you guys are headlining a show that I'll be at in like three months at the um the rock on the range here in ohio and um it's it's looking like you guys are going to be busy with that but you also have this project that's not new as anthony just told us a half hour ago but um right. it's one that you guys seem to be excited about with pisser man so very busy time for you yeah pisser, pisser's a band that um i've been playing with on and off since about 2003 so we the band is then and the band is actually older than that because that's when i kind of hooked up with them um, it was born out of the ashes of uh, this other band that I was in with Richard Fortas, also from Guns, called Honky Toast, and we were signed to Sony. And then uh, um, we did a record, and then we got dropped, like you know the, the the typical you know first band story. We get dropped, and then uh, out of that out of the ashes of that band and a couple of other New York City bands, Pisser was born, um, and the singer of Honky Toast, Eric Eric Toast, Eric Jacobson, we call him Eric Toast. He uh, Started pissing with a couple other guys, and he kept he kept it going, and and um, and I jumped on board around on and off 2003. It's had Richard Fortas has also played in Pisser a couple of times, um, and Anthony Anthony came in a couple of times, um, dropped out a couple of times, but now he's back in, and uh, we've been playing. This unit's been together a couple of years now. Sure. Now with with Pisser, man, is it is it odd at this point for you specifically? to go back to smaller rooms and playing because obviously with guns and roses you're playing big rooms and you know right. you're you've been in you've been in large bands before this you know psychedelic furs and whatnot you know right. is it is it kind of odd for you to kind of you're in on your day job you're kind of in in these big rooms on your on your night job you're in a you know you're in a hundred hundred to two hundred seat club trying to you know make your bones well, well, um, Pisser is unique um, in the sense that um, Pisser, like this, the, the way I view Pisser is that Pisser belongs as like my personal little joy, happy time. You know, like like when we when I when I, when I get on stage with Pisser, you know, I don't care if there's two or two thousand people there. You know, I'm having a ball. I'm playing for myself in Pisser. Um, with with uh, with the bigger bands and especially GNR because there's an expectation when one goes to see a GNR show, um, I'm much more of a quote unquote professional music- musician in that situation. So it's actually more comfortable and more satisfying for me to play tinier places. Like when GNR does when we do the surprise club shows, oh, those are my f- super favorite shows to play because I I, I'm, I feel more more of the intimacy makes it more comfortable for me as opposed to like playing a bigger show and performing and and there's a lot of pressures in a bigger show so it's actually more comfortable for me to play in smaller things you know sure well especially uh, pisser like i said i'm sorry i'm like a pisser you know i'm with you know anthony's a friend of mine first and then we play together in a band and eric is a close friend of mine um and then we play together you know those so so you know we're really we're really close and we're good friends and I've known them for over 20 years, you know, so it's easy to get up on stage and play a smaller place with Pistons. Just, it feels more comfortable for me. Sure. Now, uh, Frank, uh, talk, 
talk a little bit about GNR, and I'm just curious for you, for you personally, I mean, obviously you've been doing it a little while now, so it's probably faded somewhat, but from the time that you first joined the band on, it's no secret, when, whenever Axl Rose shows up anywhere, it's a spectacle. It's, it's a media spectacle. Everybody is, you know, all eyes are on everything. He doesn't really do anything small. You know, for you, just as, as a guy and as a musician, you know, is that exciting? Is that stressful? How, how did you feel like, especially when you first joined the band and you just get so much attention put on you, you know, every time you show up anywhere? Well, um, um, it, it, you actually answered your own question because it, there, is a, there is pressure on the band to perform well, obviously, to play the songs right and all that stuff. But, you know, Axel carries so much weight of the whole thing. It, it really, you know, it, it's really um, doesn't, it, I don't feel, the band doesn't really feel that way. We're there to support Axel. Axel's the one that really feels the weight. I mean, he's under a lot of pressure, you know, um, to perform and, and, you know, and the whole business side of guns and stuff like that. I mean, I mean, for us, it's not, I mean, it's nothing, to, we can't compare to what he's feeling or and what he has to go through uh, to, to perform and go out on tour and stuff like that. So, so um, it's really it's kind of it's kind of weird in the sense where yeah all eyes are on him so it kind of you know takes a little pressure off the band in that sense um, but as far as performing and making sure that you know we go up there and play a great show and making sure that he's comfortable and he can hear you know himself and the band and he's pumped and he's having a good time like that's our main focus as a band is to make sure that he's comfortable and happy up there, you know. So, so um, I, I, I think I think the band really concentrates on a good performance, and then everything else takes care of itself. And with, with of course, Axel being the main focus of the band. Sure. Well, um, Frank, we've had this discussion on the classic metal show many times over the years. The show's been around eighteen years now, and. We've, you know, talked music to death. (laughs) Thanks. And uh, we've we've talked what makes a band, you know, what makes a band? Is it is it the individual? Is it the collective efforts of everybody? Is it the originators of it? You know, because, for example, Kiss is being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as I'm sure you're well aware and uh, it's going to focus on the four original members, even though there's right. been numerous members in the band. Obviously, right. for the same thing, Guns N' Roses has been inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Is the band the original five guys, or is the band what you're involved with now? Well, I mean, I mean, um, I mean, I guess, you, I guess, you know, the listener is really, really the person that's going to answer that question. As far as, as as far as I'm concerned personally, um, I look at Guns N' Roses as a legendary band, and I'm playing with this legendary band. Now, um, like you said, like the, the five original members, obviously, you know, the first record is, is one of the greatest debut records ever. I mean, Steven's performance on that record is masterful. You know, I put, up, I put that first record up against any, any band's first record ever. Um, but that was also 20-some-odd years ago. You know, everything changes, everything grows. You know, it's kind of the, you know, you add pieces, then pieces fall off, and it kind of sh- shifts, um, changes and shifts size, and it gets smaller and bigger. And, um, but it's still kind of, the nucleus is still there, you know. So, I, I mean, I would still say that Guns N' Roses is still a band today. Um, but yeah, but it's a different band than it was 25 years ago. But I would still call it a band. Sure, absolutely. Well, that's an honest answer. Again, Chris and I are just novices when it comes to you know band business, as it were. And you know, I'm sure a guy like yourself has faced uh, you know a lot of criticism because you got the purists out there, and then you got the people right, who course. just enjoy the music for the music's sake. You know, so I'm sure you get it from both ends, from criticism to high praise. So, you know, as a as right. a, someone on the outside looking in, getting it from the horse's mouth is always a is a refreshing experience for us here on the Classic Metal Show. Right. I, I mean, um, and and it's, and especially from the drummer's seat, which is uh, um, 
obviously the drummer doesn't get the spotlight, sh- sh- you know, doesn't shine on the drummer much, which which is which is totally fine personally for me. Um, I can't speak for other drummers, but for me, it works perfect. Um, but each drummer has has brought a special thing to this band, um, starting obviously with Steve and and with Matt, um, uh, with Josh Freeze, you know, with Brain. You know, every drummer has brought a special thing to the band. So, um, again, um, I still consider it a band, and would you know. You, you know, you make a dish and you add flavors, and you know you don't make the dish the same way every single time. You might add a little more salt in this version of the of, of the dish, or more pepper the next time, or more lime. You know, it's just it's, it's the same dish but with different flavors. You know. Sure, absolutely. Now, overall, what is your impression of Chinese Democracy as a as an album? Because you know. It is a big mishmash of various people who came in and out the doors over a right. you know long period of time, and you right. got to participate in you know the drumming of this. So what right. what's what's your overall impression of that release? Well, um, that's a good question. I mean, um, there's a lot of songs on the record that that you know I I love, um, um, especially playing you know like Shacklers and stuff like that. You know. Um, I, I think I think I think the overall picture of, of for me of the impression that this record has left for me is that um, all the different personalities um, of all the different musicians you know come out through the record um, with the constant um, the constant being Axel's voice the common denom- denominator being Axel's voice you know so um, that's that's the main thing to anchor on with, with Chinese. You know, you have you know all these different sounds and all these different moods on the record, but at least you have one constant, which is Axel. You know, so my overall thing is that of of Chinese is um, you know Axel's great vocal performances on almost every song. I mean, I mean this I love is 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 incredible. I mean, singing on that is just insanely incredible. You know. Um, I, I, you know, I, I really like the record. You know, I'm, I enjoyed working on it, and and I enjoy performing it. Well, well, Frank, let me ask you a question, and this is a totally outsider looking in type of a question. Right. Uh, from the outside, and I think most fans would agree, Guns N' Roses just looks chaotic. Everything about it that we see looks chaotic. Is it truly that chaotic, or is that just really? the impression that the media and everybody else gives us that everything is chaos always in that camp? Well, well not, I wouldn't call it chaos, but I definitely would, 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 would say that it's edgy and, and a bit off the rails. Um, but, but, that's what, but that's what it is. That's what GNR is. That's why people love it. And that's why people you know, wear the patches and the T-shirts and buy the records and put up the posters because it's kind of still has that bit of that outlaw mm-hmm. kind of off the rails you know doesn't conform you can't fit it in a box uh, type of thing so I, I don't think chaotic is the right word but it's definitely not normal <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> not by the numbers for sure and sure. I don't think that I don't think uh, that this band will ever work that way because it's just not it's not its personality it's not the spirit of the band you know I mean it's you know I mean, I, I, I mean, I wouldn't call it any more chaotic than what well, the Sex Pistols were like, or or the Ramones were like, you know, where it just has kind of like this edgy thing to it, you know. But I, but I think that's just the, the the nature of the beast, and that's like before, way before I was in a band, you know, that was always there. Sure. Now, now, Frank, mo- moving back back toward um toward the project pisser um sure you know it, it's certainly it's certainly a different musical pro- project for for you and you know and certainly for anthony as well you know it, it's it's definitely more punkish i guess than oh, definitely, than, what, definitely. than what either of you have been doing is that right. does that make it i guess difficult's not the word because you're an accomplished player but is is it is it is it tough to switch gears more or less between playing one style, you know, with one band and another style with another band? Well, you know, um, um, with these two, the, okay, with, with Piss, you know, because, again, Piss to me is like this unique thing um, solely because it's like something I do out of total love, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, 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 it seems whatever happens in Piss, it seems natural to me. I don't really think about it. Um, my my drumming style, uh, my 
grew up um, growing up here in New York City and um, listening to all my favorite drummers always has more of a punk rockish thing to it, more of a you know bashing punk rockish thing to it. 